Welcome to Team Training and Quality. My name is Dr. John Bachman. I'm the Saunders Professor of Primary Care at Mayo Clinic. Dr. Saunders Endowment has been given to Mayo to help educate those people in primary care. This project is totally funded by that endowment and we are very grateful to those people who are smart enough to realize primary care needs some extra help. The course that you're going to be involved in is called Team Training and Quality. Let's take a look at our current way we do projects. Imagine if you would that you're in a ski slope area and you're at the top of the hill and there's hundreds and hundreds of skiers below you. If we were to say that the project was to get to the bottom of the hill, most projects begin by blindfolding the skier and sending them down the slope. We know what happens. So what we do is we introduce data. And interestingly enough, most of the data that we get in primary care is retrospective data. So it's like we're going to send you down the slope and we're going to show you where the skiers were 30 seconds earlier. And, you get the, yeah, and then you get the results of that, that type of behavior. You start hitting people. What we're going to show in this course is how to anticipate where the skiers are going to be so you can navigate your way down the slopes to safety and victory. How are we going to do that? Well, one of the things is we're going to try to ignore the rhetoric of quality improvement. One of the things that Deming said is what is going to attain unprecedented levels of quality and productivity? And then you would think that someone in the audience would say, everybody has to do their best. And then Deming would come back and say, and that's the problem. It's not about everybody doing the best. They're already doing their best, is what Deming, Deming would say. Think about these types of terms, the rhetoric of quality improvement. All of us need to be accountable. Do it right the first time. We need metrics. We need to be customer or patient focused. Quality first. These terms in themselves are great. However, we've used them so many times that we've lost the real meaning of them. What they become are political catchphrases to accomplish things that probably will not improve quality. What we're going to be doing in this course is talking about quality and teaching us in a way that will be fun and also that you'll learn and that you'll also remember. Let me tell you a story about Dr. Deming. At the last IHI meeting, I sat next to Jim Bakken, who was the expert of quality improvement or the head of quality improvement at Ford Motor. And he told me stories about Dr. Deming. They were good friends. This is one of his stories. Dr. Deming fainted. He was then brought to the Detroit hospital. And at that time, he was quite famous. And so you can imagine if you were a hospital and you had this quality guru coming into your ER. Well, they worked him up and then the doctors came down and said, well, Dr. Deming, we want to have you stay overnight and um, we'll take good care of you. Well, Dr. Deming said, well, that's okay, but I have to be in Washington, D.C. tomorrow. And the doctors came back and said, well, no, that's not going to be possible. You will not be able to go to Washington, D.C. Dr. Deming then said, why don't you go and think about it? The doctors left Dr. Deming. They went into a separate room. And about 30 minutes later, they came back to Dr. Deming and said, Dr. Deming, we can send you to Washington, D.C. You'll have to spend the night here. You'll have to hire a chartered plane. We'll have a nurse accompany you, and you can go to Washington, D.C. tomorrow. And Dr. Deming looked at them and said, aren't you glad you thought about it? Three weeks later, there was, a ch there was a envelope from Dr. Deming to the head of that organization in Detroit. Now, you can imagine what you might be thinking if you were the person who was receiving that envelope. You open it up, and there was a check for $100,000, saying how grateful he was that the people took care of him. The point that Dr. Deming was asking his medical people to do was to think about it. Right now, we are like cars with four flat tires running along at 60 miles an hour, and we haven't stopped to think about it. This course will allow you the opportunity to think about it. As we go about things, um, if you take a look at any type of project, 
Uh, you have ideas and development. And then you have costs. As the project develops, the ideas that you develop early on are really cheap and inexpensive, but they determine how the project goes along. The farther along the project goes on, if you decide to change course, the more expensive it becomes to change. So the things that you do right up front are very, very important. If you do the upfront stuff right, then you will spend less money and you'll have a successful project and you won't end up spending a large money changing. Changing a project midway causes a tremendous amount of problems. So one of the things we're going to do is focus in on this. Now if you think about what goes on in your institutions, my suspicions are that they are of two types. The first is you get a bunch of middle managers together, they all work together, they spend a lot of time, then they panic and develop a project and then they say, well, we'll work this out uh, when it comes out. Uh, the project that we have, we can't quite get it all, but we'll, we'll, we'll just in install it and then let the people uh, try to develop it. The second group of, uh, 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 of projects that we see are a project where the people have um, uh, a mandate and that mandate comes from the government or something like that and then what happens is they just implement the, the mandate just as it is. And again, it cr creates a lot of havoc. Now that is not what we're going to be talking about. What we're going to be talking about in this area is how to set up your projects in such a way they'll be successful. Every one of you right now wants to solve your problems. Guess what? We're going to solve your problems, but it's going to take us a little while to learn how to do this. You have to be patient with us. You have to be patient. Have faith that the, at the end of this, you're going to solve a tremendous amount of problems. By working up front like this, we're going to save you a tremendous amount of money later on. Learn the theory first and you watch. It's going to save you a ton of money. You're going to be much more successful. The way this is going to work is this project is developed for teams. You should be getting your teams together. They should be sitting and watching this YouTube. All the, the formats except this one follow the same pattern. The first is Ramon Casino, a doctor in uh, Jacksonville who currently is a resident and who will be joining our staff will begin with an introduction. He'll, he'll introduce a topic. The second thing is I'll come on and present some sort of example. Typically they're quite funny. Uh, typically they're the kind of things that you remember. It's not about the content, it's about remembering the content, learning the most important concepts. Then Ramon will come in and give you a conclusion and finally questions for your team to ask each other. So introduction, examples, Conclusion, discussion. None of the sessions should be more than 20 minutes long. At the end of, of this, you'll have about 20 minutes to talk about things that are important. I'm going to make one suggestion for your teams. Hand out some cards, two cards to each person. At the end of the 40 to 60 minutes that you've had after the sessions, have everyone on that team write the name of somebody on that team and write something that they thought that they did very good. For example, Ramon, you came out and talked about something that everyone else has been afraid to talk about for years. I really appreciate your courage. Boom, you give it to them. What this is going to do is reinforce positive behavior and is also going to make sure that people interact. So two uh, three by five cards given at the beginning and then at the end filled out and given to the people who are a part of that group. We are going to be using some resources. Um, the fundamentals of our course will come from this. This is four days with Deming. Uh, it costs about $300. As you listen to it, it's quite boring through most of it. And all of a sudden he has a very profound thought, a profound idea, and you say, wow, that was worth it. Something about Dr. Deming that's a little easier is Dr. Deming. A third book that we use is the Team Handbook. And finally, the Bible of the course is Data Sanity. This is an incredible book. Um, the book is extremely dense. Uh, 
I think that you'll find that if you were to start to try to read this now, it would take you a long, long time. It took me several months to try to master and understand this. It isn't that it's hard, it's just so dense that there's so much profound thinking in it that it just takes a while to do that. So after the course is over, many of you will want to read this book, Data Sanity. So those are the four main books. During our uh, coursework, we will also provide you information with other things. So those are the books. We will have a website for you to go on so you can see the various courses that we have. We will have education materials and education resources that you can use with your team meetings. And we'll also have a feedback pro area so that you can give us uh, feedback so that we can also improve the quality of these presentations. So that's the uh, course. Remember, we're going to solve your problems, but you have to be patient. Remember the diagram here. And we hope that team training and quality will have a significant impact on your practice and on your lives. Thank you very much.